So you bought a Mazda Miata. Sick. But there's one problem. It looks boring. One of your friends even called it ugly. So you hit it with the hard top, slapped some cool wheels on, maybe even wrapped it in epic color, and it looks better, but it's just not cool yet. You know what I mean? Well, my name is Greg Peters. You're watching the Car Passion channel, and today I'm gonna install three exterior modifications on my Mazda Miata that are gonna make it look awesome. So let's jump into it. So here's my 99 Miata wrapped in tech wrap ruby green and equipped with a Treasure Coast race top and some flying Miata Kogeki wheels. It's coming along nice, but it still looks a little basic. So the next thing I wanted to get going was a trunk spoiler because I love how simple yet effective they are at giving the Miata a more aggressive look without being over the top. I tried this ABS spoiler that I found online and although I did like the shape, I didn't really want to have it molded to the stock trunk and I didn't think it would look that great if it was riveted in or otherwise attached, so I decided to take it to the next level by hitting up Carbon Miata. Ever since I discovered the NA version of their ducktail trunk, I've wanted to pick one up, and once I saw that they made an NB version also, it seemed like the perfect fit for what I wanted. So here it is, the Carbon Miata Type 1 NB trunk, which they offer in both fiberglass and carbon fiber versions. Both versions are notably lighter than stock, I have the fiberglass version here. And I know you're asking yourself, Greg, why is it purple? Okay, hear me out. I told you I wanted the car to look unique, and I think the purple is a pretty nice complement with the green. Okay, I realize that joke doesn't really work because you already saw the thumbnail, but anyways, it's purple because Carbon Miata sent me the trunk from their purple NB, the one that's on their Instagram. So I thought that was pretty cool. Plus, I'm having it wrapped anyways, so the color doesn't really matter. To install your new trunk lid, you must first open the trunk and admire your nitrous bottle. Oh, you, you don't have a nitrous bottle? Well, I can help with that. Anyways, let's start by removing things from the trunk lid, including the license plate lights, which just pop out of place and can be unplugged, the third brake light, which is held in by some 10 millimeter nuts, and a bit of a tricky clip that's very difficult to show on camera, but you basically have to stick a flathead screwdriver through this hole and press this tab right here to free the light from the trunk. Next, remove the harness completely, which is held in place by a couple plastic clips, and unbolt the latch striker by removing the two 10 millimeter bolts. The final step is to remove the four nuts that secure the trunk to the stock brackets. And this step is easier with two people, but it's certainly possible to do by yourself. Next, just follow all of those steps in the reverse order, which of course sounds much easier than it actually is. Remember that anytime you're working with non-factory body parts, there will most likely be some level of adjustment or modifications necessary to get it to fit and function correctly. But let's get this thing wrapped real quick, and then I'll show you some of the stuff I'm talking about. When I first installed the trunk, the front sat too high and there was a big gap and it looked pretty misaligned. But all it took was a couple washers in the correct place to change the angle of how this trunk sits once it's closed. And now the gap looks pretty much stock. The other thing you need to worry about is the third brake light. Unfortunately, this trunk does not have threaded posts like stock to install the light, so it needs to be mounted using another method. Carbon Miata recommends installing with sealant, but I couldn't really find anyone online actually showing how they did it, so I ended up epoxying mine in and then using sealant to waterproof it. The good news is, is that it worked and it's pretty solid, but the bad news is, is that it doesn't look all that great. So I need to redo this to where the light actually sits flush with the trunk like stock but for now I just wanted it to work so it'll be okay until I have the time and supplies to redo it and make it look better. Now that the trunk is finished, it's time to move on to the next part and that would be the R-Theory version one diffuser. Another part that I've wanted to try out for quite some time and I think it's really gonna amp up the way the rear of the car looks. 
Our theory has hooked me up with a coupon code to give to you guys as well, which is CPC5 if you wanna pick one of these up for yourself. And that coupon code can be used for both the version one seen here and their most recent version three design. I personally wanted the V1 because it's smaller and more subtle, but the V3 does have various design improvements and a more aggressive look. Both designs are in stock right now at our theory and using this coupon code will save you some money and support car passion at the same time. Installing the diffuser is one of the easiest things you will ever do to your Miata. First, remove the rearmost 17 millimeter bolts on the subframe. Then slide the mounting tabs between the subframe and the subframe brace. Now this is gonna look a little bit different if you have a 90 to 91 Miata, but there are special brackets included with those kits so the short nose boys aren't left out. You can also find installation instructions for the diffuser on our theory's site, which I recommend checking out as well before installing your diffuser. Once the front tabs are secured by the bolts but not tightened down, use a jack stand to hold up the rear of the diffuser and decide how high you want to mount it. The included brackets and mounting tab design allow you to adjust the diffuser both up and down and front to back. Since I wanted to keep it more subtle, I chose to mount the diffuser as high as possible. This is also because I have a steep driveway and I'd like this thing to survive a little bit longer than my typical eBay front lips. My limiting factor on how high I could go with the diffuser was the position of the muffler, so I had to make sure the diffuser was mounted low enough to clear that, otherwise it would most likely make some noise and I didn't want to add to the 17 other rattles that the car already has. To mount the diffuser this high also entailed opening up the optional slots for the tow hooks, which only took a minute with the Dremel since the diffuser is made out of aluminum, which also makes it super lightweight. And as with the rest of the parts I've installed on this car, everything just seems to be a little little bit off since it was crashed by one of the previous owners. And I really don't recommend buying a crashed car as it's caused me more headaches than I was anticipating. But everything worked out fine here, I just had to shave a little extra material off the tow hook slots to make everything clear. The top of the rear brackets get bolted into an existing hole in the chassis and this is where you get your height adjustment from. You can see there are about a dozen different options on these brackets. And that is it, it's just six bolts to get this diffuser installed and now you've got a much more aggressive looking rear end and you're helping reduce that parachute effect of the rear bumper so an added bonus might be a couple extra miles per gallon here and there. Looking at the before and after shots here really showcases what two simple mods can do for the look of a car. Okay I realize I said I was installing three things today and the third thing is the classic eBay lip which just screws into the front bumper. And this one in particular did not fit very well. I think it might even be for an NA, but I'm not really sure. Anyways, I kind of forced it to fit and it didn't come out too bad. From 20 feet away, it looks just fine. Seriously though, looking at the car with and without the lip, I think it looks a hundred times better this way, even though the fitment isn't perfect. So what do you say we scrape our way out of the driveway and get a good look at this thing out in the open? That's all I got for you in today's video. And man, isn't it crazy how just a few aesthetic mods can totally change the look of the car? I mean, from the front, that lip, I feel like it really ties in the front end. It doesn't look like it's as high as a Ford Ranger anymore, but the rear end, every time I look at it, I'm just like, look at that booty. And that's exactly what I want to think when I'm looking at my car. You know, it, it feels like it's my build now. I got some performance mods on it. It looks way cooler. People are giving it thumbs up on the freeway and stuff all the time. And it's just generally a good feeling to uh, be driving your car and be proud of it. So don't forget to check out the companies that I featured in this video, which I have linked in the description below. The next video is gonna be the Nitrous Dino Day, which I am both excited and nervous, but no matter what happens, it's gonna be a good time. Everyone's gonna have fun. So peace out.
and I will see you then.